everyone. Welcome to yet another session of uh, In Dialogue Certificate Course in Dialogue Studies 2023-2024. Uh, we have with us Dr. Shanti Kumar Hetiarachi, and we, he would be speaking on dialoguing with the religious other, opportunities and challenges. A little bit about uh, Dr. Shanti Kumar. He currently serves as a faculty member at School of Religion and Philosophy, Minaj University, Lahore, as well as visiting lecturer at the Universities of Colombo and Kelania in Sri Lanka. He has a PhD from Melbourne College of Divinity, University of Melbourne, where the topic of his thesis was post-colonial Sinhala Buddhist revival and the displacement of Buddhist Christian majority minority roles and identities in Sri Lanka. He completed his MA from Peradenia, Sri Lanka, and his B, uh, Bachelor's in Theology from the Pontifical Urban University, Rome, uh, in Italy. We welcome you, Dr. Shanti Kumar. And before you start, I would like to tell you that you have uh, two hours to conduct the session, uh, which will include a question answers, and you can do it, uh, you can place it however you like. And I would like to uh, request the participants to switch on their cameras and also um, make the session as interactive as possible. Sonal and uh, Susena, please switch on your cameras. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Shanti Kumar, the floor is yours. You can start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pragya and Vesat. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm Sri Lankan, but, but I currently I'm on a teaching assignment here in Minhaj University, Lahore. It's about 50 kilometers from Vaga border. Um, of course, there are difficulties, uh, even if I want to get to the other side, you know, for obvious reasons, um, even though I would like to visit um, um, Amritsa, uh, particularly Amritsa, uh, something that I really wanted to do. Um, instead, I have opted to go to visit the old civilizations. Uh, Harappa, uh, which I think is a very important and significant, uh, not just for current Pakistan, but also Mahabharata. Um, that's where the origin of Hindu Sanatan Dharma perhaps uh, is supposed to have begun and started, and Mohandajaro all the way to the Sindh and to Karachi <clears throat> along the Peshawar Valley. So um, uh, what I would like to uh, discuss with you this afternoon is the, uh, an important area in interfaith relations uh, is that uh, dialoguing with the religious other who is not part of one's own tradition, but who is from another tradition. And uh, this other is religious as much as you are religious. So we think that, uh, that we are religious and they aren't religious. But that is not the case. Uh, those who are in religious into religious dialogue, a stepping stone for that that dialogue is in fact understanding and realizing that both belong to religious traditions, but not necessarily of one party. And this is a fundamental. Uh, understanding that we need to develop and nurture. I want to discuss with you what actually dialogue is about. What actually dialogue is about. Um, because uh, uh, we think that it's the human beings with languages who can dialogue. But actually, that's not the case. 
uh, come to think of it. And uh, dialogue is between one party with another party among human beings and uh, also one with a group or thousands. You know, that can be kind of a, a dialogue. The opposite of dialogue is a monologue that you talk to yourself and that talk to your group and that you continue to discuss things with one party. So dialogue is a conversation with another or with many or with several others. Whereas a monologue is also a conversation. In movies, you have monologue. In dramas, you have monologue. In plays, you have monologue. So um, it's interesting how we kind of uh, try to understand this. All right. So dialogue is not without, um, it's, it's one with a group and several others. So it's not a monologue. But birds, have you seen dialoguing? It's very interesting. Birds, I'm on the fourth floor here and uh, the window is facing a football field of the university. And, uh, and on the window panes, there are uh, four types of birds that come and land. Interesting. And they talk to each other. It's fascinating. And they don't know that, <laughs> that a man is inside the room. And I'm not far away from here. And for the first time, that is as close as I have been to few birds. Because they don't like get close to human beings, even though we like them. That's why we have binoculars, because they don't come to us. We try to have this conversation with them. But the, they talk to each other. We don't know. We haven't found their language. We haven't found their language. Insects do. The little ants, they communicate. The bees communicate. Hmm? But they are, they are not communicating with the language that we have. Now, we have this particular time. Uh, I know you, you, you all speak all kinds of languages in, in, in India and elsewhere. And uh, here, of course, is Punjab. Punjabi and, and, and Sharaiki and Urdu. But English is the link language here. And we have the luxury of this in order to talk to each other today. And I am in conversation with you. But you are not with me verbally, but you are in conversation with me in your mind, in, with your thinking. Hmm? It's very much... A conversation and insects do, animals do, fish do, and they all have their own senses. Some say, "Well, it's it's the sense. What they do is it's not the way that we talk, but they communicate." Would be the the best way to put it. It's the it's the smell sometimes, especially the dogs. In Sri Lanka, we had the 2004, we had this uh, severe tsunami. Not a single dog, dog died. Not a single dog died. 32,000 human beings died within a period of one hour. 32,000. Not an elephant died. They had some uh, kind of communication. They felt they went to the upper grounds. By the time the, 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 the floods came, the water came from the sea, the tsunami gushed into the, onto the land and they escaped. Human beings did not. They have something, a, a kind of a, a different kind of a sense perception, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So they communicate. They communicate. And... Uh, it is also that the planetary system, probably the gravitation is a means of communication. You know, uh, how on earth this massive planets rotate around its own axis and then 
the gravitational system is also a means of communication. So, but we have effectively developed languages. Before we were, uh, before we had language, any language, have we ever thought of human beings without a language and still communicating? Hmm? I think the paleontologists are very clear about it. That uh, we have had ways and means of communicating with each other. We communicated with sound, noise. Sound created noise. And uh, uh, human beings as sapiens didn't have language. We had symbols. We had symbols. An Egyptian uh, civilization here in Harappa, um, I saw with my own eyes that they did not have a language, but they had symbols to communicate. Probably a symbol would communicate a story, not anything else. One symbol will communicate a story of the clan. So what we have is a very, probably a restricted language. Because if you don't know English, we don't. Like me here in Punjab, you know, I'm in, in the middle of Punjabi and Urdu. And I don't understand anything. We have problems with that because I don't speak and they don't speak English, especially the, the minor staff. Because they are in charge of services and to communicate with them. So you, we use hands and fingers, eyes and everything. We go back to the old symbols. Sometimes I say food, kana. Uh, food. <laughs> I liked it. Uh, yeah, I mean, 21st century, but we still use symbols like that. You want to eat? I'm, I want water. Water, water. Because... If I don't know, if I don't remember the word for water in Punjabi and Sriyaki, I, I need to say bottle, to say the bottle, bottle water, or a tap. You open the tap and show. So we use symbols to communicate in the dire, in, the, in, in utter desperation. Because you know, when you go to Japan, if you go to Japan in the middle of Tokyo, you only know English and Punjabi or some other Marathi, Gujarati. Uh, that's it. And you know how small you are when you are in a completely a strange place. And the importance of language dialogue becomes so desperately crucial to be happy and to make sense of your being in that particular place. So dialogue helps us to exchange ideas, new knowledge new knowledge, exchange ideas. And uh, especially with infotech, we have developed and uh, biotech, infotech and biotech that we have developed. We, we have gone into uh, uh, several new areas of knowledge that we have not seen before, 25 years ago, 10 years ago, some things that we have not seen before. So it is important for us to understand the, the, the need for dialogue among human beings. And dialogue is utterly and desperately crucial for us. And uh, um, I also, next, my, my next step, I want to discuss with you types of dialogue. Hmm? We have what is dialogue and types of dialogue. We have types of dialogue. One is a casual, casual, everyday, inform, con informal conversation, sometimes with friends and family, uh, in colloquial, in colloquial language with jokes and with, uh, with pun on the language. Uh, I have seen it among, particularly among the Punjabis. They, they, among themselves, there is language within the language. 
interestingly, some of the folk words come in that are not part of regular language. Hmm? So it is a, it is a it we call we call the casual dialogue, dialogue within friends and family. Then there is formal dialogue, structure. In some way, what I am having with you is a sort of a formal dialogue. So you become polite, hmm? professional, professional. And uh, you set up a program and it's a business matter. You Business matters you talk. And uh, sometimes formal gatherings, seminars, academic conversations, presentations, um, this will become kind of a formal dialogue. They don't, you know, in a conference, we just had a conference last week. We had uh, uh, keynote addresses, formal, and plenary sessions, formal. And then we had parallel sessions, formal. But they are all dialogues between one person and several others. Then, then there is also the internal dialogue, the third one. What do I mean by internal life? It's a way of self-reflection. Hmm? You, I have seen uh, from my window here uh, during lunchtime, there are exams going on right now. Uh, students, boys and girls, sometimes they come in uh, groups but go into different parts of the field and they sit with their book, internal dialogue. They discuss the matter among themselves, with themselves. Hmm? Interesting. And um, they find answers for themselves. They find answers for themselves. That we call internal dialogue. The other one is uh, Socratic uh, dialogue. Socratic. Socratic is... Socrates is famous for asking questions. He always asks questions. They are called Socratic dialogue. But it is a form of dialogue. You ask a question. You inquire the participants. Like I will inquire. Or you will ask me. You will inquire. And we, then we engage in that dialogue in series of questions and responses. And that is called Socratic Dialogue. It's a very interesting way of, in philosophy and uh, whole Greek tradition and especially the Buddhist tradition um, and in certain Hindu traditions um, and prophetic traditions, you find uh, this Socratic way of answers and questions. And it leads to a deeper understanding of the matter under discussion, under debate, okay. under dialogue. Uh, all right. The next one is debate. The debate is also a dialogue, form of dialogue. You as students at your, at your probably your tertiary level, secondary, high school, uh, pre-university, university levels probably, and some of you might be still around in that postgraduate, graduate area. They have a it's a kind of a, also a structured form. And, but a dialogue is a debate. And uh, uh, participants use arguments and counter arguments. And then they build on the arguments and counter arguments. And sometimes end the debate inconclusively or conclusively. And that is also a part of dialogue, hmm? a debate. Um, they choose a topic, of course, sometimes not necessarily uh, scientific, but also part of humanities. For example, we are dealing with ecology these days, world religions and ecology. Next week, we are going to do a certificate course. And you try to persuade, you try to persuade your listeners on your argument and your facts and matters. And uh, you, inf you inform them with your new knowledge and then you win them. You win them to your side. You win them to your side. And that is also uh, a part of 
dialogue and it happens in parliaments with parliamentarians debating and in in houses of courts you argue in front of a panel of judges to win your case and the other is a dramatic dialogue where you you have a, a play where you have characters in performance on stage hmm? they include elements of conflict tension and performed by actors so that is called dramatic dramatic dialogue you dialogue with uh, an audience in front of you but with characters on the stage and that is dialogue communication conversation the other one is a humorous dialogue humorous this is also very important intended to entertain this is also amusement and uh, used in uh, largely in entertainment industry entertainment industry humorous dialogue sometimes it is um, interestingly appreciated but sometimes things can go wrong in this dialogue because you can hurt the feelings of other people listeners especially when you are talking about a race a color uh, a religion or, or or a country Mm. the other one is a conflict dialogue my sixth or the seventh one it's a disagreement but that is also dialogue you are in a conversation with your with your classmates suddenly a disagreement comes and you end with a conflict you end with a conflict and it is can be also confrontational between the parties between the characters and we can end up in a deep conflict the other one is a love con love dialogue mm. it is called a love dialogue it explores a romantic relationship mm. uh, especially between lovers emotions and expressions of affection between the between the parties and uh, they are somewhat very light hearted conversations between the parties but it is a beautiful uh, stage in life especially the teenagers and the adult youth are involved in this conversation okay that is my sort of the first part we discussed the what is dialogue and types of dialogue what is dialogue and types of dialogue okay i will you will you can note your questions and we can then go back to the questions and answers and clarifications later on i have sent you through in dialogue some books for reading there are three general books that i have sent at the end of it and uh, three books i want to uh, not to discuss three books but give you uh, an idea of three things about the concept of the other who is this other hmm? who is this other and who is this religious other so we discussed about dialogue but now we want to discuss who is this religious other and the whole movement there is a movement of otherization hmm? i must write that hmm? i can write it here right uh, so otherization can you see that now yes yes okay and uh, it's a movement okay i want to talk to you about a movement uh, sorry movement it's a movement and uh, i'll give you three movements three and they are all related to the books one is uh, is this guy franz franz um fanon 
you have that in the uh, you have it in the book list his book actually is uh, uh, black skin and white masks hmm? interesting book originally written in uh, french uh, you can see that right you yes. can see what super um and this is about in my view the first the beginnings of in the in the last fourth four five centuries this book talks to us about how the uh, the original in the last five centuries what happened in 1494 interesting 1494 um, in when when um, queen uh, isabella of spain uh, permitted vasco da gama to go for searching for new land mm -hmm. 1494 and that's the first time they found somebody who is different to the white man and they found it and they went in search of india they went in search of india because they have heard so much about india but they went the wrong direction and they ended up in south america and they saw people who were not brown but who were red and they call them red indians how can indians be red indians cannot be red indians are you most of you and they the first expression of other became us and them it is us and notion of us and them came about okay notion of us and them came about in in human history okay so the spaniards and the red and the red red indians they marked it and of course few years later in 50 in 1498 it was manuel the first from portugal they authorized okay now go in search of the real india and you know what happened vasco da gama vasco da gama came to calicut in india via cape of good hope south africa and they found finally the lost india for them it was lost india but india was always there india was always there and they found us and them and the movement of otherization very clearly according to franz fanon in his book black skin and white masks originally pre originally published in uh, i think 18 1852 i believe i have written that there yeah? um uh, long time ago long time ago and uh, he he makes this case he makes this a beautiful case of the beginning of us and them and they found black people of course in africa they found black they therefore they suddenly found brown indians they suddenly found black africans and fanon very clearly says that this is the beginning of that distinction of otherization so there is a movement i want to name it as a movement of otherization and it in my view for for us this periodization is sufficient for this discussion but of course you can go beyond you can go beyond that but i want to give you just three points three scenarios that's one 
And number two is creation of the other is by Edward Said. I haven't given that. Edward Said, have you heard of him? Edward Said, in his book Orientalism, book called Orientalism. Orientalism. This came in 1970, 1970, 78, 1978. And it is an interesting book. Edward Said, I'm sorry. Edward Said, huh? S-A-I-D. He's a Palestinian, a Christian, Palestinian Christian, but died as an American. Um, and he write this book. In this book, he says, interestingly, that historically, uh, what Vasco da Gama and Columbus started spread as colonial project. Colonial project. And the other became more complicated in India. In India, it was Dutch East India Company. Do you know this? Dutch East India Company. It became hmm, company, which became British East India Company. And they came for business and they found others who are different. And they found exotic Indians, exotic Africans, exotic everyone. And they thought life has begun. Us and them. Otherization. Hmm? Otherization. You make one who is different to you the other. Hmm? It all began there. It all began there. And it continued. It continued different way. And my third one, my third position, third position is, that book is also there, is, I think it's a Appaya, uh, Kwame, uh, British, uh, Kwame Anthony Appaya, the South Indian Anthony Appaya. You will read this, Anthony Appaya. And he, in his book, uh, it's an interesting book also, Ethics of Identity. It's about us, about you. Ethics of I, Ben, T, I, T, Y. In this book, he says that Identity is a very significant thing about us. And you want to be identified as who you are, the way you want to. Maybe among you there are, I have in my class um, sometimes uh, about uh, both males and females, MPhil students here. And you have 10, 12 Muslims and they dress differently. They're all in their same age, but they dress differently. And each dress tells about their own identity. And they are also very different Muslims. And we think that every Muslim is just one. No, 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 no. It's not the case here. When I ask them this, they sometimes inside the class they disagree on certain things. They believe in certain things, but how they, how they operate, how they dress, how they eat, and how they pray are sometimes different. So, uh, Apaya, Apaya says that 20, 20, 20th and 21st century, that is your century and my century. Hmm? Of course, I'm from two centuries. I'm from the other century also, as you can see. Uh, 20th and 21st century. 20th and 21st century. 20th and 21st century, it is about multiculturalism. 
multicolor. This is a movement where each is distinct. It's like a mosaic. You know what a mosaic is? On a on a on a wall, each piece is distinct. Each piece is distinct, but without that piece, the wall is incomplete. That wall is incomplete. So Anthony Appiah tells us a different story of multiculturalism, of about distinct identity of each religious, cultural, language. And this is where we are. But I didn't want to come here without what I have spoken. Hmm? This is where we are here in 2023. Third decade of the third millennium. Third year of the third decade of the third millennium. And each one of the religions is distinct. Therefore, otherization, otherization cannot sometimes hold water anymore. Otherization cannot hold water anymore. Of course, there is the distinct religious other. Okay? There is, uh, see, uh, three of you, Pragya and Sonal, Thikare, both of you. Both of you are women. But both of you, I can see, you dress differently. Your hairstyles are different. Your probably uh, cultural patterns are different. Your likes and dislikes are different. So what is common for you is that you both are women. But in that womanhood that belongs to each of you may be common. That is probably the common ground that I might talk to you later on. But that's not just you. It's only a part of you. A woman who is only part of you. That's not the whole of you. Because in you, there are other distinct identities that make you who you are. And that is multiculturalism. I'm not saying that it is the, the problem-solving mechanism for us here at this point of time. No, but it is a reality. It is a reality. You in India or in here in Pakistan, even though Pakistan is a, is a it looks a monocultural, um, particularly here in the Punjab, but no, they are all different Punjabis. <laughs> There are Punjabis. I mean, 27 million speak. 27 million speak Saraiki. And that's more than the population of Sri Lanka. Entire population of Sri Lanka and Norway together. <laughs> Saraiki. The southern Punjab. So... They, they, it, it's hard to say, okay, they are all Punjabis. You put them in the same pot. No, no, it doesn't work like that. And they know it. I I, I ask them, you know, smilingly, laughingly, I ask them, yeah, yeah, sir, yes and no, sir. Yes and no, sir. Because they know that it is not like that. It is not like that. 240 million. And you have 1.6, probably 1.4 billion in India. How complex the society has become. So each one is distinct. Each language group is distinct. And each of us 
is distinct. So you might ask, sir, so the, so uh, you mean to say that otherization doesn't happen now? It does. It does. It happens. For example, Hutus and Tutsis in, in um, uh, Rwanda in the 90s, they call each other names. They call each other cockroaches. Otherized. You otherize. Like the conflict between the Israelis and Hamas. You make the other a non-existent figure. Then easy to eliminate. Then easy to eliminate. You make the other a dragon. And you make yourself a victim. So it is among us. But the purpose of our discussion is to understand this other. And more particularly the religious other. Can we call that religious other a co-pilgrim? A co-pilgrim. That we are both on a pilgrimage. We are both on a pilgrimage. And we perhaps believe where we might be going. We might believe that we are, we are going. But we are all going. We are all on the way. Hmm? We are all on the way. Okay. I will come to my third and uh, final part. Okay. I have with you some opportunities. Some opportunities. It is important fostering understanding with the religious other. Hmm? Fostering understanding with religious other. We cannot uh, just say, okay, my religious other who is a Hindu, ah, the easiest thing is to say, oh, they, we believe in one God, they believe in many gods. Ah, we have already made a decision about other, what other people believe. If you ask a Hindu, Hindu, I teach Sanatan Dharma. If you ask a Hindu, do you believe in many gods? They say, ah, yes. Not really. Not really. We, so we have become people to prescribe other people. Yeah, doctors prescribe medicine, right? So we, when we see a Hindu or a Muslim, we say, ah, no, no, he's, he's, he's believing in one God, the others are believing in many gods. But we have not really asked a Hindu, what is it that you believe? We have not asked a Buddhist, sit down and ask, what is it that you believe? How do you do that? No, we assume. Ah, no, Buddha is a man, he, he was born and he died. And there is no God. No, all kinds of things we prescribe about the other. So by prescribing things to others, we have done the process of otherization. See? We have made my neighbor a religious other because he, she is not believing in what I believe. And not only that, the worst thing is I prescribed him. I prescribed him to what to believe, not allowing her or him to describe him. You see, we must allow people to describe themselves. Saida? Right? You are listening. 
Hmm? We must allow people to describe themselves. Never prescribe things. It's only doctors who that, do that. Don't prescribe. That is why we must foster understanding. So, dialoguing with the religious other must foster understanding so that we come to know each other more closely, more dearly, more tenderly. Second, and that will help us to build interfaith relations. That will help us to build interfaith relations. These are some opportunities. And I will come to the challenges. Hmm? The religious other, how do I understand the religious other? It is utterly important in, in interfaith conversations. Fostering understanding because it must build interfaith relations. We must relink in gaps of communication. There is an opportunity for us to do that. Gaps in a local community, something that has happened maybe last year, something that happened last year between the two communities. There is a gap of communication. They don't talk to each other. Hindus and Muslims, particular village, shall we say, and relink. This will help us to relink those gaps of communication. And it is an opportunity for us. It is an opportunity for us to understand the religious other. Learning and seeking new knowledge. This is also very important. You see, it is good to know your text. I always tell my, it is no good to know your text. And it is very good to know your text. And it's superbly important to know your text. There is no question about it. But to know what my religious other's text, wow. That will not underestimate your faith. It will rebond your faith. It will rebond your tradition to yourself. But to know more, to know more, to seek that knowledge, you have become a bigger person in knowledge. And as a seeker, and as a seeker. So learning and seeking in interfaith relations with the religious other. Your dialoguing with religious other will help you to learn and seek new knowledge. And you'll come to know about the, the, about the Trimurti or Tawhid or the, the function of the ulama and what the rishis have said and what the disciples have opted in the Gospels of Jesus. And what the Buddha has said 45 years. Preach 45 years. This man from Kathmandu. Man from, man from Lumbini. Born in Lumbini. Walked in the, in the Kathmandu Valley. All the way down to Bihar. New knowledge learning that you know the religious other. Clarify. Clarify assumptions and prejudices. We have loads of them. Oh, the Muslims. Oh, the Hindus. The Hindutva. Oh. We have already made, con we have already made conclusions about it. Oh, the Christian. They want to convert the world. So we have prejudice and assumptions. And all the Palestinians, all the Israelis, all the Americans, <laughs> we, have, we have a way of talking like that. About people, about individuals, and about situations, countries, cultures, languages, people, their colors, gender. Without, so we need to 
clarify. And we have the opportunity to clarify dialoguing with the religious other and prejudices. We can iron out our prejudices against the religious other. Working on policy on religious freedom. Ah, on policy. It's a policy matter. It's a matter of governance in a multicultural society. India, for example, it has a, it has a very good constitution, Ambedkar. During the first government of uh, um, Gandhiji, Ambedkar was given, the, given all powers to create this. Of course, there are other complications that took place with Ambedkar's conversion to Buddhism. That, that's a different matter. But the constitution upheld that there should be religious freedom for people in this multicultural country called India. And we can work on policy matters, those of us who are able to do that, so that everybody in a particular country, place, town, city, a municipality, able to practice their freedom and with due rights. There are opportunities for us in this conversing with the religious other. Attempting to conflict transformation. Oh, very important. That we become agents of conflict transformation. We transform the conflict to a united effort towards harmony, towards peace building, towards uh, respect for other religious groups. So it is a conflict transformation tool. Dialogue is an attempt for conflict transformation tool. Okay, seeking common ground. We have common ground. Certainly we have common ground. And every religion that I have studied, every religion that I teach here, you have khidmat, you have service, and you have hismat, and you have seva, and you have service for humanity. Social responsibility of every religion. And every founder, every prophet, every sage, every rishi, sannyasi, priest, pujari, they are about hmm, Sikhs, same seva. The langa is, a, langa is a symbolic of that great seva to happen. Hmm? Giving food. So seeking common ground, that we seek common ground, not just we seek for common conflict, but we seek for common ground. Very important. And it is an opportunity, opportunity to dialogue with the religious other. Mm. Community capacity building. Shall we say that 11 of you are in six communities and you link you link with your knowledge you link with each other with your experiences your knowledge and you build the capacity of the community not for conflict but to work together towards towards common good towards common good so you build Society from grassroots. You build society from grassroots. Okay, my... Uh, but we have some challenges. Let's quickly go through the challenges. Burden of history. Deeply held beliefs and various views of other people. Hmm? We have burden of history. All of us have a burden of history. We put it on now. And the Israels, Israelites, Israel would say, well, it is a land given by us. Given, given, given to us by God. And in Sri Lanka, they say that the, this is the land of the Buddha. 
and India will say that this is Hindu land. How can the land be Hindu? How can the land be Christian? How can the land be Buddhist? There are Buddhists in a land. There are Muslims in a land. There are Jews in a land. Land is a land. Land cannot be defined by whatever that is Jewish or Buddhist or Hindu or Muslim or Islamic. No. Land belongs. Land is our home. <laughs> land is a home for all of us. But we have divided it. Those are severe burdens of history with deeply held views of the other. And we define we define our identities with land. Misunderstanding, misunderstanding, misrepresentation, and misinterpretation. Three misses. We miss them. And we miss the bus. We miss our journey as co-pilgrims. Right? Because we misrepresent what they believe. What the religious other believes, I misrepresent because I give a misinterpretation to that. Misinterpretation to jihad. And misunderstanding. When somebody wears a perda, we think that that she is she's she's outside the planet. And we cannot believe that it's the, that's the only way that that woman is able to interact with society. The rest of the people, we don't judge people by what they wear. We do not. Okay, stereotype and gossip mongering. With social media, gossip mongering, mama mia, unbelievable. And the gossip becomes truth. About people. Gossip becomes truth. Stereotype. The Chinese are like this. Bengalis do not know how to eat. Pakistanis are like this. Indians eat chapati and curry. And they don't know how to eat anything else. All these are stereotypes. You get, ten, you get 10 Indians, they eat differently, they dress differently, they talk different languages, for goodness sake. People should know that South India alone speaks about 15 languages. They all think that whole of India speaks Hindi. No, you know it. You know it. Okay, stereotypes and gossip mongering. Never, never recycle gossip. In with your phone, do not. You stop the cycle. You can stop the cycle. This morning, two things came. One about uh, Israel. Another one about Muslims. Somebody said, send it viral. I said, why should I? Who are you to tell me? My friend is a friend who sent. I said, no, I stop the cycle. I will not cycle it. It goes into garbage. So you become the person who is stopping the cycle of hatred. Gossip mongering. Theological disparities and disagreements. We have this. These are some challenges, friends. We, have, we cannot say that all religions are one. Can we say? No. I say no. Not all religions are one. It need not be. Therefore, theological disparities are there. Disagreements are there. That is fine. But we must know how to handle them. And that is a challenge to dialogue with the other. That is a challenge because we have disparities and disagreements. Good. Of course, cultural gaps and differences. Immense. So much. Many. 
They have cultural gaps. And the Christians and Muslims here in this part of the world, in Punjab, uh, Christians, exactly even though uh, their marriage is a sacrament, yet they follow the um, Islamic customs. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, because the, the religions are different, but the cultural, culturally, they do the same thing. Maybe it's similar to there, but there are differences. So we must, these are challenges, cultural gaps among the religious other and the differences. We must know that before we go into that language, myths, customs specific to people. Kerala and Tamil Nadu, South Indian states, but they have each of them has a distinct language. Each of them have distinct language. They might be cooking uh, dosai, but the taste is different. <laughs> Idli, the size is different. The curry is different. Sodhi is different. When it comes to Sri Lanka, People in Sri Lanka even don't recognize that it has come from South India and Malayali speaking people in Kerala because they think it is there. No, it is Malayali. The Appam is Malayali <laughs> and Tamil. And North Indians don't even know that something like that exists in the same country. How beautiful it is. Oh, beautiful. But there are challenges. There are challenges. Even the food is a challenge. What is this? <laughs> we suddenly say. Because we don't know. Simply because we do not know. We say, what is this? With a tint of negativity. Not full. Because you anyway eat it. Because there's nothing else on the table. But you speak, what is this? Strange. No, because I do not know. Some things I do not know, I must ask, what is it? How do you make it? A better way to ask, not to say, what is this? How did you make this? Ow. Then you have a conversation already. You have built a relationship. Oh, Shanti is asking, how is it made? Not that I'm going to make it when I go home. No, but I give respect to the man or the woman who made it. And I have started my relationship with him and her. Because I have entered, entered through food into their culture. There are challenges, but you can win those challenges. All right. And fears of conversion and proselytization. I fear, okay, if I speak to a Hindu, they might take me to a pujari in one month and then make me kind of a Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian. And this is a challenge. This is a big challenge across the globe. A stigma of compromise. Okay, will I? Will I? If I, as a Muslim talk to a Christian, will I compromise my brotherhood of Islam? Or will I kind of my Hindu theology? Or if I go to a temple, will I become part of Hindu gods and goddesses? Will I become a Buddhist? Kind of stigma that I have. And or maybe I am compromising my, my religious tradition. That's a kind of a, another serious challenge. And it, the last one, uh, maybe another one. Lack of knowledge and no knowledge of the others. I have nothing. Like the food example. Suddenly a dish brought and I, lack of knowledge. I ask, oh, it's smelling, my goodness. It's like the Tutsis, Hutus thing, you know, called cockroaches. You don't know? For goodness sake, keep your mouth shut until you know. So we, we fear sometimes. 
We fear because we do not know. That is why we fear. Lack of knowledge of the other is a big challenge. We think that uh, uh, when I ask uh, um, my Sri Lankan friends and family asking, Shanti, are you safe in Lahore? I said, what do you mean? Safe in Lahore. No, there are bombs. I said, where, did, where was the last bomb? Uh, there was a bomb, yes. Where was it? Uh, it was in KP, Kaipa Pakhtunwa. All right, that's about 350 miles away. And they think Pakistan in every nook and corner in Lahore, that's a man holding a gun. You know, it's sad. Lack of knowledge. And it is a challenge to dialogue. No knowledge of the other. No knowledge of the other. So it's very important to Okay, balancing inclusivity and not losing what is authentic. Okay, we must balance how to how to include my my friend who is different, sensitive. Hmm? Okay, now somebody is coming to my house and I am uh, and there are Muslims who are coming and I must be sensitive to include him and her and her family who will eat. Only halal food or kosher food if it's a Jew and a vegetarian. Therefore, I call and ask, uh, what's, what's, what's the food you like? Oh, oh Shanti, I, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. Okay, fine. Thank you. Now, that's to include that person. Not assume, but include that. But in an authentic way but in an authentic way. So all this is, is very important for my next slide, which is transforming challenges into opportunities. You would have seen this. Hmm? This picture. Two donkeys. I, I don't know why the donkeys are put there, but it looks like sometimes we act like donkeys. Maybe it's because of that. The first donkeys, have, they have seen. What have they seen? They have seen fodder. It's mine. And mine too, of course. Both of them are saying. They are eager to eat. But they know in a moment that they are pulling each other, that they cannot reach the fodder. And then it, then he said, I saw it first. And you saw it second. In the second Play. But they try to pull. And then the third one, I fight, he fights. For what? To eat. Without knowing, without knowing in typical donkey's way that what is tied to my neck is not long enough to reach either place, either pot of fodder, the grass. And then they are tired, too tired, too tired. We are exhausted, not only exhausted, but damaged, but damaged. Therefore, we got to do something now. Let's talk. Let's talk for a minute. Let's talk for a minute. Because it must be a win-win situation. Both parties should win. Transforming challenge into opportunities is that both parties must win, win at the end. Because my religious other, my desire is not to make religious other me. <laughs> you know, that should not be the purpose of this dialogue, this conversation. Not to make the religious other finally me. The distinctiveness of the religious other must be kept. Therefore, transforming challenges into opportunities is what we must find always. And I think I have 
gone about 45 minutes. Okay, that's what I thought I like to share with you this afternoon. Thank you. And over to you, Ragya. Thank you, Dr. Shanti Kumar. Some of the things that you said uh, were uh, so uh, relevant. I think especially uh, we had somebody who uh, who is uh, working on otherization and religion as their thesis. And uh, Zikra also, I can I know that she's interested in this in this part, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of other people have also benefited from your talk. Uh, I also love the part that uh, you know you also spoke about uh, your experiences in Lahore and and the stereotyping. I think sometimes uh, uh, if if you use dark humor or just use humor, sometimes you know these uh, this uh, stereotyping can actually uh, bring about uh, a very good conversation. And uh, something that, the, you know, with humor, other people can sort of understand as well. So, uh, well, the floor is open to questions. Uh, please, uh, if anybody has any questions, please uh, feel free to raise their hand. You don't have to have questions. You can see, have comments. If you experienced otherization, if you ever, uh, you know, did otherization, so uh, unknowingly in ignorance before, uh, you know, you became dialogic people, Everything is welcome. So please uh, feel free uh, and uh, ask. Naim, you unmuted. Uh, I'm assuming you want to say something? You must ask something. Uh, uh, thank you. I don't have any question, but I just want to thank you for, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, there was a very good uh, topics. Uh, of course, every part of the topic needs a lot of uh, discussion on, on that, but uh, I really like that misunderstanding, misrepresentation, and uh, mistransportation uh, uh, will uh, make us to miss the bus too. Uh, I really <laughs> like this. Uh, I look, <laughs> we really uh, have to uh, increase our knowledge read more, understand others, their religions, their faiths, uh, their ideas. Uh, it's really important. And if you don't do that, uh, of course, that it makes uh, challenges or um, it would uh, make the situation worse. Uh, instead of solving it, uh, it, it will uh, just uh, complicate it. It was really good. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good evening, uh, okay, sir. Okay, so Lika, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, first of all, I found this this entire session very impressive. To add on to what uh, Naim said about misinterpretation, hmm. sir, my first question to you is all these holy books that we refer to. Uh, when it is about religion, the base or the foundation of the religion is made on what we have been told in the holy books. If I am not wrong, sir, you can like uh, add on to it, sir. Is that isn't that exactly uh, what what makes our foundations of religion, right? So, so basically, when we talk about language, uh, even via holy books when they have been written in different languages and when we talk about hermeneutics basically the 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 ground where the reader and the writer meets what if the reader is misinterpreted he or she misinterprets what is written or what has been written and all these propagators who teach us about religion are ignorant in their own selves so so how do we I mean, point is, who do we have to agree to? Is it our intuition or is it the religious books? And on what <laughs> basis do we have to have our uh, um, ideologies? Mm. Yeah, we do this. Another question, this. another question to you, sir. sir. Okay, no, sir, please, please continue and complete your, uh, what you were about to say. Uske baad, yeah. I'll ask another question. Yeah. Okay, Tulika, I like this. Uh, yeah. See, I, we do this here. In the, I did this in the last semester, your question, entire question. 
uh, we divided the whole program into Indic traditions mm -hmm. and Sinic traditions. Indic includes uh, Hindu Sanatan Dharma, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism. That's Indic. And then we took Daoism and Confucianism as Sinic. And the other is Semitic, which is Christian, Muslims, and Jews. Of course, they I call them also dysfunctional cousins. You know, they are cousins, but they are dysfunctional. <laughs> because they have been fighting for 1500 to, to 2000 years. And still, hmm? uh, it's also about the text. You are right. They fight also about the text. You know, we little know, the, if you take all of the religions, if you put them, in the, given the benefit of the doubt, you put them on a 5,000 scale, 5,000 year scale. Right? And the formation of texts, the formation of texts are very controversial. Where was it formed? How was it formed? And how did we have this particular text that we are reading called Gita? Or the Bible? Or the Torah? Or the Al-Quran? How? And who gives authority to X, Y and Z to interpret it? So. The questions are raised by young people like you cannot be dismissed because they see the man who interprets in the morning is caught by an abuse in the evening and is already by morning he's inside the prison and he is the person whom you listen to interpreting the gospel. The Torah and a hadith in reference with reference to the Quran, to several surahs. Then your question comes to your mind. And that same evening, this priest, this mullah, this rabbi got caught publicly and put in prison following morning within 24 hours. So you have a question. Valid question. You have a, uh, then someone might say, okay, Shanti G, Shanti Sab, you you're taking one single, one single isolated incident, and but that one single isolated event leads to this one single isolated voice to raise its opposition. The question is correct, but for that single person. You see, so there is no direct answer to look for your question. There is no direct answer. Why? Because the religions that we are talking about with their text are deeply institutionalized deeply institutionalized and you are looking and you are looking and some of you are looking for spirituality in this big institution. You can't find spirituality in a big institution like that sometimes. You cannot because it is lost. The plot sometimes is lost. Lost by the, by the very people who are there to safeguard it, unfortunately. We have about 10, 12 Buddhist monks who are inside the prison. And in Saudi Arabia, there are over 100 Muslim clerics who are inside the prison. And remember, simply because you are a mufti or a mullah or a priest or a bishop, God's grace not necessarily do come from them. 
So don't look for your examples. You don't find your examples in them. Find your example in the spirit of the tradition. In the spirit of the tradition. With, without, or despite the clerics. And clerics do not represent sometimes the tradition that people believe. So, don't look for your examples, your role models among clergy, those who interpret, but seek, but seek the spirit of the tradition. And perhaps there might be the path for you. That might be the path for you. Not that there, are, there aren't holy men and women in these traditions. Of course there are. I have met so, you have the good, bad, and the ugly. Good, bad, and the ugly. Look for the good. Look for the good. Avoid the bad. Disown the ugly. Hmm. Sir, uh, does, does this mean that as we grow up, we have to have, we have to agree to all the institutional norms and somehow maybe shed our individual ideologies or do we have to pretend that we we abide by the rules that the institutions have created and then secretly we can have our own individual uh, beliefs i mean right now we are i am i believe i am at a no man's land because with all the discussions about religion like it, during your class, you said about uh, the land. The land doesn't belong to Jews or maybe Hindus or maybe Muslims. So how is a human body uh, or a human being uh, has been categorized in the form of a religion or a religious person? I'm moving my... Okay. Uh... Don't pretend. Don't pretend. Do not pretend. Uh, you be. You can be as straight as yourself about it, and uh, don't find your uh, role models among them. Find your role model in the spirit. How it has stood the grounds for so long, and there are. There are men and women who are who have gone the, who have taken the straight path, hundreds of them. Look for them, but you do not you don't pretend. That's the last thing that you would want to do for yourself. But listen to them that but don't follow them. <laughs> you be your own, you be your on your own. Uh, the judge of that. Listen to them, but don't follow. Don't follow them. Follow your your internal, your inner light, which is the light that can reflect in the spirit and the light of the founder or the text. So, but don't don't leave because of one or two bad apples. <laughs> right? That's more encouraging than to say don't... Uh, basically what I'm saying is don't throw the baby with the water. Sir, one last question. You keep the baby. Sir, uh, what is the spirit? What is the meaning of spirit of tradition? Does different tradition have different spirits? And how do we decide what tradition do we have to follow? That which gives you energy, light, enthusiasm, uh, kick to live, energy to live. That is what it is. In Sir, short. Isn't it <laughs> a dynamic process? What if some tradition inspires me right now and another tradition inspires me after two days? So what am I supposed to rely on? Yeah. One that has inspired me today or the one that is going to inspire me 
after a couple of days you will know it in the by the third or the fourth day <laughs> okay sir so it was really nice uh, this this entire discussion was good thank you so much for all your responses no yeah, you <laughs> you are very welcome but those are those are very very normal regular questions tulika <laughs> hmm very good Prepa okay. Dev, your face tells that you have a question. <laughs> no, maybe okay. we have some time. Yes, yes. Uh, Sonam, uh, you are next on my. Okay, uh, Poonam wants wants to ask. Poonam, go ahead, please. Yes, Poonam. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. my question is regarding the point you discuss about the inclusivity and not losing authenticity i understand mm-hmm. the part of inclusivity like accepting difference and accept uh, understanding the difference but what is like how to know that what is authentic hmm good um interesting as a good question yeah inclusive you include you include the uh, the religious other who is different to you who thinks eats dresses everything different to you but how do i include that somebody who is so different so different it is a painful exercise it is a painful exercise but but if you with all those things with all those things with that religious other everything is different but you take a first step first step to include him or her in your conversation in your relationship in your dialogue circle in your uh, food table at a university level or whatever neighborhood level and when that woman know that man feels and tells you puna i will never ever forget amidst those complicated conversations that you came to me near that pillar with a hot cup of tea and one vade and that is the moment of authenticity that man has woman has felt your approach not with this complicated debates but with a vade and a and a cup of tea that you brought when he was thinking am i to stay here or now go and he Three days later, in the bus, I meet you and comes to you running. You make me feel so happy, and that's the moment of authenticity of yours being proved, not by you but by the other. That's when you know that you have been authentic. Your authenticity is not by not defined by you. your authenticity is defined by the other and that's when you feel aha uh-huh, that's inclusivity with authenticity got it that's yeah, what yeah, i can thank you you're thank welcome thank you so much sir very beautifully explained and it was a lovely and amazing session with you we enjoyed a lot thank you you're welcome you're very welcome Thank you, Sonam, for the question. Um, Sonam, uh, you can go next. Uh, well, I don't have uh, a question as such, but uh, I want to share my experience. So, sure, absolutely. Yes. Sure. Uh, before you start, I would just like to tell uh, everybody else and uh, Dr. Shanti Kumar that uh, Sonam, uh, she works on interfaith and, and a lot of peace building and uh, on the ground. so just wanted to introduce that please go ahead sona 
<laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Pranya. So, Dr. Shanti Kumar, that was one beautiful presentation, and the way you explain things in a very easy language, it is very understandable. And uh, thank you so much. So, yeah. my experience is like uh, right now, I am in between one program named as Face to Face, in which uh, delegates from nine different countries are here. And uh, I got this opportunity to uh, organize and conduct this program. And nine different countries means nine different individuals. Uh, they are basically theology students. And uh, their experience after coming here is so amazing. I mean, it's been 10 days now, but no complaints so far. And we cannot say that, that each person is, uh, you know, like, it's, it's he, the person is different, but they are. We all are living together, eating the same food, enjoying, cracking jokes, similar. Like everything is so similar that we cannot say that the person is different, even though we are from different relation and all. But and it is so beautiful experience over here. Not even in the food, they're not. They they are not even complaining for the food or something like that. And all these uh, uh, these topics which you have shared, I I am actually experiencing it in in person. Like yes, there are misinterpretations and misunderstandings. Uh, even they said that back there in uh, uh, in their country in their home, they do not um, um, you know like um, um, mingle with the people from different churches like. Denom there are several denominations in Christianity, uh, Christian churches. They do not mingle even with them. But here they are getting to learn how beautiful, how beautifully we all are working. They were not even able to, um, you know, um, find out that I'm not even a Christian, I'm, I'm a Hindu. So uh, it's like, uh, it's like, it's us who are creating all this um misconceptions and misinterpretations and i think it is in our conduct that uh, we can when we can bring it in our like conduct uh, that uh, that uh, concept of oneness so it is uh, this is achievable i mean uh, this in dialogue is achievable this that peace between uh, people is achievable <laughs> thank you good thank you for sharing your um, your experience of meeting religious other, right? Or the different, the, those who are from different countries, yes. also religiously different, right? Sonal? Yes. Good. Yes. Good luck. Good luck with your research and living together. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonal. Uh, uh, Saida Sukena, you are next. Uh, if you'd like to share something or ask a question. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, sir, it was a very, very interesting talk that you gave at the lecture. Uh, so, sir, I have an observation, if uh, that is what I can put it as. So, like, we discussed the concept of otherization and how otherization is done when done uh, to exclude a group from another or to prove that somebody is superior or somebody is inferior to us. But, sir, when you see uh, otherization in dialogue or, like, uh, dialogue with the religious other, so, sir, isn't again understanding that we are different and there is this other, but understanding it from the perspective that it is okay to it is okay that we are different, but that is where we should begin. And instead of excluding one another, we should actually begin with how it is just simply fine to be I am a Muslim and somebody can be Hindu and then we can have a conversation and not necessarily exclude the person or if I am able to explain what I'm trying to say. Yeah, um, let me give you like Sonal an experience. Um, <clears throat> I was in the UK and uh, I was invited to establish a group and the model of uh, dialogue at that time in the, in the UK was very locally established councils of faiths. <laughs> and UK had about 150 councils of faiths in various cities and towns and districts and it's amazing. So I was, I went one day, went to the central mosque of uh, Bedfordshire, not far away from London, north of London. And uh, it took me some time to 
meet him and finally he said to come after Juma prayer on a, on a Friday. So I went. There was no one. He was the general secretary of the mosque. So we sat in the middle of the middle of the mosque. People have moved away. Uh, it was my job to kind of, uh, the job was called interfaith worker. Interfaith worker. <laughs> Interesting title. Uh, and uh, we sat and he said, so you are so and Shantik Kumar from Sri Lanka. Hmm. Good. And he said, so what is, what are you about? I said, I am planning to evolve a, a council of faiths. Oh, another group. Yeah, it's a model in the UK. And we are, we are trying to do, this is a preliminary survey that I am doing. Shanti, he told me, look here. I assume that, I don't know, maybe, that you are a good Christian. And, uh, and I believe that I am a good Muslim. So if you are a good Christian, suppose, and I am a good Muslim, what is the point in we talking? Uh, I looked at him in his eyes and said, Mr. Khan, Eddie Khan, he was Eddie Khan. I said, Khan, I am not sure whether I am a good Christian. I believe that you are a good Muslim. Maybe. But don't you think? Take the good part away. Because good is becoming good now. We have to become good. Like Poonan's question, her authenticity is proved by the other person, not by herself. So my being a Christian is finally should be kind of authenticated by the other. I told him, Mr. Khan, I think it is the very reason why you and I should talk to each other and get this group together. And he came. And we had successful four years of work together. So, my point is that uh, our coming together, Saida, our coming together, we start with difference. Because it's okay. We start with difference. But on our path, like Sonal found in nine countries, but they, they don't know whether they are, they are there's no need for them time has come, there's no need for them to, you are a Muslim, you are a Hindu, nothing they're pro probably young, all young people and, and, and they have encountered each other, encountered each other, so this encountering the other not as somebody who has smallpox. You know, we sometimes think that the other person who is not, not in my, of my religion has smallpox. That my association with him will make me also a man with smallpox. We start with difference, Saida. And we build on our difference. And the rest is a bonus. My coming to know you better. And why the name of the what is the meaning of Saida? Whether it is Arabic meaning of Sukaina, Ali, Papa's name, Mama's name, heritage name, all these names have come. What is the meaning of Punan? And you, 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 the difference is there. Hmm? That difference we build on the difference, and we don't fight with the difference. We know that we are, we are aware of our difference. But the rest, if you start with difference, the rest is every day a bonus. Because you earn. You earn your stars. How, how clever you have become with Pragya associating with you. And she coming to know you. That's what has happened to these nine boys and girls in Sonal's group. They are meeting each other. 
they are meeting each other and their lives will be changed thereafter. There will be different people when they go back to them and they become ambassadors. They become ambassadors of, of what uh, probably uh, the text beyond the text. And, and you go with your own text and you become the text. <laughs> right? Good. Thank you, Saida. Um, I think Zikra, you're left. Uh, if you'd like to go next. Yeah. All right. uh, thank you so much uh, for the session. Uh, it was so nice uh, and it was very beneficial for me especially. And I don't have the question, particular question on the session, but uh, I would like to comment on your uh, session. It was so, so, so nice. And especially the last part uh, that that's like transforming challenges into opportunities this is what I was uh, thinking that uh, together we can win. We have to work together like uh, as you uh, depicted in the picture um, it is a best part of your session so i would like to say uh, if we want to establish peace if we want to conduct uh, um, peace in the society we have to work together we single we can't do anything we should not think that we are hindu we are muslim we are buddhist we should work together as a Human being as a to create uh, peace in this society, we have to work together. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Zikra. Yeah, good. I mean, learning is a learning is a very important aspect of all our lives, and um, they sometimes these students here thank me, sir, teaching. Thank you, sir, for coming. Um, I come twice a year for the last five years. Um, this is my longest period, two months. I finished uh, exactly today. In a month, I'll be gone for some other work in Colombo. So um, I I tell them, I said, as much as I teach you, but I learn in this beautiful uh, uh, historic place of both of the Mughals and then the British and Ranjit Singh's uh, confederacy. <laughs> and uh, marvels of uh, Harappa Mohandacharu. <laughs> you know, those are, they are only living legends of this place. So I, uh, learning does not, should not Sikra stop us. And we must learn always. And uh, that will open our paths to negotiate. Hmm? Negotiate with difficult situations. Negotiate with difficult situations personally, at a family level, then community level, and, uh, and at a regional and international level. So what we cannot actually, what we have failed is that we have not been able to negotiate at these levels. A lot of efforts are taken, but with slightest thing, everything can go wrong and uh, for example this middle eastern uh, we were almost there for a settlement almost there for settlement saudi arabia has made contact with israel saudi had an israeli embassy in jeddah and uh, iran and saudi arabia had come together in a historic way. And everything was uh, in, in, in a form. Given another two years, we would have had incredible changes in the Middle East and a, and a, and a permanent or a negotiated settlement for Palestinians. But uh, things did things went wrong. Things went wrong suddenly, and you have ten thousand people killed in in twenty five days. So we have not learned human beings. The donkeys are doing a better job in the picture. 
so secret don't give up <laughs> work at your level all of you work at your level and and be hopeful uh, despite this trouble sometimes with that i mean it's a hopeless time for young people when the world why the world is like this sometimes the world is run by men and if you give a chance to women to run the world maybe <laughs> there might be a better better negotiations done uh, and i think an old man <laughs> run the world hmm. so but be hopeful that's the that's the i think the timeline we have and if you what do you hope for sir hope for the future because you you have future all of you hope for the future and future is your hope and hope is your future hmm. thank you azikra uh, for that comment and thank you uh, dr shanti kumar for actually sharing uh, you know more experience we still have 7 uh, uh, minutes 9 did you get a yeah. chance to go i'm i think i got I, i'm not sure if you spoke did you yes yes okay all right if there's anybody else we still have time for one more question or comment um uh, dr shanti kumar i would just like to share one little uh, yes you know uh, thing from my side uh, that you know um, i think my dialogic uh, journey started uh, in europe uh, when i met the first pakistani and uh, you know it was uh, and i think i i would just like to point out that the media is uh, quite responsible in the process of uh, otherization so mm. i think they they have a very very large role and some day when india's um, you know we 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 peace mongers always say this that some days when we have the nuremberg trials of 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 let's say the middle east or of of south asia then the media will be put to trial and that is i just hope i see that in my lifetime <laughs> so uh, that's just just one thing i want to point out that uh, it's it's a meeting people face to face actually changes uh, helps helps a lot so that's just a little one comment from my side yeah yeah it's a necessary evil hmm. it's a necessary evil you know when princess diana passed had had that this accident she was followed by a fleet of paparazzi media she was they were after her because it was big money she was in the top in the top media campaign and a photograph from her Uh, a kind of a photograph they are after uh, could uh, catch thousands of hundreds of thousands of uh, pounds and dollars that was kind of a so uh, and and she also some said she also went after it at some point media so uh, it has misgivings misgivings and uh, and media why media cannot be brought to nuremberg probably uh, hard is that you cannot pin down one single person uh, so we media is also uh, uh, has become also necessary for us to get to know the global crisis which we have not known sometimes silent wars fought and they don't come into our uh, our discussion flows and people today it's a it's an open trump like it's an open game so we have misgivings about it it is also it also has good bad and the ugly as i said good bad and the ugly um yeah uh, but we have to yeah, we have to take 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 control of this also but also give some some uh, measure of uh, uh, benefit of the doubt so that they communicate to us what we ought to know 
what the humanity ought to know. Mm. Okay, thank you, Dr. Shantika. It was it was an amazing, amazing lecture. And I'm sure, and as you can see from the responses and the interaction, everybody had uh, had had a lot of learnings. And um, yes, and so uh, we uh, we are very grateful to you for taking out the time and uh, coming uh, for in dialogues uh, session here. And we absolutely, absolutely uh, look forward to hearing more from you. And uh, also, uh, I would personally, because I, I work a little bit on India-Pakistan citizen to citizen peace, so I would love to also connect with you. Uh, maybe sure. later. Most welcome, Pragya. Yes. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the In Dialogue Society. Uh, Bexat, my friend and colleague, I think, now that we have worked with uh, several projects and look forward to working with you. In fact, I have visited in dialogue uh, about six, seven years ago, um, and uh, also Hyderabad, the counterpart of in dialogue in Hyderabad. So it is now good to. I would have actually come in person uh, had had I had Vaga border being open and unnatural you know, flow of human beings up and down. But unfortunately, it's, it's just 50 kilometers from here to Wagga and then, yes. of course, yes. yes. Would have maybe taken. soon. Maybe it'll open yeah. soon. Maybe. We hope for that I'm also. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you.